greetings and salutations, my friends. This is Practice Score 101, scoring using Practice Score for gun games. I would suggest that you watch this video and then learn how to set up Practice Score by watching my video, Practice Score 102, Setup. Um, Practice Score is a free software. It runs on a number of different uh, operating systems and devices. Uh, you can find uh, Practice Score available that can run on the Nooks. Very reasonably priced. A lot of clubs use these. They are um, several advantages to the Nooks. It can be seen in the bright sunlight because of the paper white technology. Uh, battery lasts forever. You can run several matches off of one charge. Um, again, they're very cost effective. Problem is that the nooks are a little bit slow and unresponsive at times, sometimes requiring a reboot during the middle of the match, but all the data is retained when that happens. Uh, another device that works with the um, practice score or any of the tablets run on Android, Samsung Galaxy Tab is a favorite, 7 inch, 10 inch, doesn't matter. They will all work with the application. And the advantage of those, they are a very bright screen, but but they get a lot of glare. Much more responsive than the Nooks. They have great battery life. Generally, one charge will get you through one or two matches. Really hard to see in the sun. They do make sunshades for those, and um, you can use those to, to help be able to see the uh, display a little easier. Um, any of the iOS devices, an iPad of all sizes, they work just fine. Your iPhone, your Android phone, no matter who makes it, um, they will all all run practice score. So where do I get practice score? Well, I would show you, but practice score seems to be down at the moment, so um, uh, you can just easily go to the Google Play Store for an Android device. Practice score here, four and a quarter star. It's uh, right there. Just search for practice score. It's P-R-A-C-T-I-S-C-O-R-E. Their website, if it was up, would be practicescore.com. Um, they also have links to where to download the program. You can also download it at the iTunes Store, of course. Uh, simply search for Practice Score and it will bring it up and let you add it to your device. So let's um, talk a little bit more about um, how to handle Practice Score as far as entering shooters and running a match. Um, we're not going to go into setup in this video that is reserved for the Practice Score 102 video. Uh, right now we're just going to focus on if you're at a match, somebody hands you one of the devices and says, uh, can you run score? Yes, uh, you will be able to after this video. Uh, here's what's happened before you've even got to that point. We'll just run through it real quick. Stages have been built. I'm going to quickly change to a existing match here. Uh, stages have been built, shooters have been entered. We're going to enter our scores. We simply click enter scores. We'll start at stage one. We're going to select all shooters since no shooters have been squatted on this particular match and pull up our list of shooters here. I do want to touch here that there are a couple of ways to do things here as far as sorting the shooters. Click short, sort and click random and it shuffles our list of shooters. What we normally do, and people do it differently, I know some of the three gun shooters I shoot with, they say when you're ready walk up, you tell them your name, they click your name and off you go. Others start with Christian Jared will be our first shooter, Dorothy is on deck, Charles is in the hole, John Simmons is in the deep hole. This will not change, they do not uh, drop down to the bottom. You simply remember Christian was first lat first stage. Dorothy will be first on the second stage and continue to work your way down the list. So let's bring up Kristen ready to run a stage. Kristen has just completed the stage. The safety officer has called out to you that the time was 1287. Target one, zero down. Target two, two down. Target three, zero down. Target four, six down. 
Oops, we made a mistake. Let's correct that. We can come back here and click the minus key, which will obviously reduce that. I'm going to cut in, in a bit with a video showing how the Android devices will have a floating keyboard that you can bring up. You can make changes there. I will show you that and give narrative on that shortly. Okay, so shortly is here. Um, what I'm showing you here is that on a lot of the devices, you will have a pop-up keyboard. If you press the top of that little dome-looking thing, you can move the keyboard around on the device. All right, so you can press the numbers on the keyboard. You can uh, enter scores, seconds, or whatever it is you need to do. There is a decimal right underneath the next key. There is a delete key that I'm tapping now. Target 5, 1 down. Target 6, 0. Target 7, 2 down. Target 8, 0. Target 9, 0 down. Target 10, 2 down. 3 down. 2 down. Changed it. Alright, remember this 6 up here on target 4? Yep, I'm afraid that was two threes. That means that we have a failure to neutralize. We have one of those. Also, during P2 to P3 transition, she accidentally did a reload in the open with dropping a mag that had a round in it. That is a procedural. We saw the scorekeeper's finger come up. We simply give her one procedural. Of course, if she had hit any of the non-threats, we would simply click there. A failure to do right would be easy enough to do from right here. Now we review Kristen's score and we see that she has 12.87 in raw time. Her total penalties added up to 14.50 and that is from 13 points down which divided by 2 is 6.5. Um, a failure to neutralize for 5 and a procedural for 3 giving her a net total time of 27.37. We're happy with that. We click save. If you notice now, there is a green bar next to Kristen's name. That means she has been scored. She has completed her stage. Here is her time. We continue to the next shooter, Dorothy. She completes her course of fire. The scorekeeper calls out. One down. Zero. 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 She's on a roll. Oops. She has a three. Zero. Two down. One down. One down. She did hit a non-threat in that course of fire. We simply add that. We click review. Wait a minute, something's wrong. You must finish scoring the shooter before you can review the score. You will see that message whenever you have done something such as forget to enter the time. 14.36 was Dorothy's time. So the message will pop up if you have a scoring issue that needs to go back and be corrected. Usually it is a time was left out issue. Sometimes you may come in and accidentally put two decimals in that spot. You may have left out the seconds, but it will stop you and tell you that that's not correct. So now that we are all correct, we're going to save that. We see that we have finished this shooter running that stage, and all is good. We have a completed shooter course of fire. When it comes to scoring the steel, we see that there are four steel targets there. If there is a miss, we simply touch the miss box. Each miss is recorded and one is deducted from the hit box. If you accidentally record too many, simply touch the hit box again to balance that back out. Once all of the steel and the paper targets are recorded, you would simply click review. What happens if we have a shooter that questions their score? It needs to be edited after we have reviewed and saved it. We simply click on that shooter, select edit. Brian has determined and convinced the SO that he was only two down. It was breaking the perf on target four. Now we have changed it from a three to a two down, so we'll review the score and we save. If you notice that now there is a one with the red block next to his name, that means that score has been edited. It can go back into that shooter's name and find out what the original score was and what the new score was. That gives you some type of score history to understand what that edit was about.
What if we had somebody who came up on the stage and was running late, got stuck in traffic? We can easily add a walk-on right here in this area. We simply come in and add a walk-on. It's going to tell us that, you know, walk-on shooter enters the match, started, shoot through, blah, blah, blah. They can jump, okay, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, and this is going to show us just a little bit about adding shooters here. One of the nice things about practice score is that if your club has been running it, your shooters are pretty much in the database, so you do not have to put in a fresh shooter all the time. In other words, if this shooter's name was Chambers, I would start typing that name. I would have a couple of different options here to pick from, whether it was Randy or Chantel. I could do the same thing with a first name. This I know his name is John. Oh, yeah, that is uh, John Boucher. Okay, yeah, that's him. However, if he's not in your database, let's enter him in. Our shooter's name was Wilson. He's not in there. Not the Wilson we're looking for. No, sir. We got... Wait, <laughs> damn it, he is in there. Bill Wilson. Well, of course, his number, IDPA number, is 01. I wouldn't expect anything different. Um, you can skip entering emails, phone numbers, if you'd like. That's not really necessary. Uh, he's shooting CDP. I'd expect that. We uh, probably expect him to be a master and a super senior while we're at it. Um, he is a walk-on. All right, let's save and return. Now we'll find that Mr. Wilson has been populated into our shooters list, and there he is right there. So whenever we work through the list, we can come down, and he will be our next to shoot. I just pretend that we have shot all these shooters. The squad is now complete and moving to the next stage, to stage two. When that happens, we simply use this top left button here. If you notice, every time I press that button, the screen is sent back one place, and it takes two places to go back to be at stages. That's where I want to be. And now we'll select stage two. Again, since we have no squad, we are going to select the same list of all shooters. And we remember that Christian started first shooter on last stage. This shooter will be Dorothy that we start shooting. And once again, we just go through and we enter in her time, her points down, the information there. That's pretty much it. If we did have an issue with a shooter of disqualifying their cell, breaking a 180, sweeping their cells, or what, whatever it could happen, we simply just press the DQ key down here at the bottom. If they had a phone call, had to leave early, we have a DNF. They did not finish, and that takes them out of that queue. If we hit the DQ, it asks you, do you sure you want to disqualify Dorothy Goodwin? Yes, we do. Okay. It shows her in red and DQ. We know that she has been disqualified from the match, and we are not concerned with her coming up to shoot again. So now that we have understood most of that, let's go back with this top left-hand button and top left-hand button again a couple of times till we get back to our main screen. Let's just talk about that a second. And just a point of interest here, I am using version 1.2.26 of Practice Score for this demonstration. They do update fairly frequently, so this information could change depending on when you watch this video. If you wanted to squat a shooter uh, whenever you're doing your pre-match setup, or if they walk up and came to your squad when they were supposed to be in another squad, you simply select the shooter. We have our squad assignment here. You can select and add him to whichever squad you prefer. Save and return. We now see that John is in squad one. The next shooter, he is also unsquatted. We're going to assign him to squad two. Save and return. You can also squad shooters from the shooters edit squad screen by simply selecting the shooters that you wish, pressing squad in the top right. Once you've done that, it pops up a box. It allows you to select the squad you want to place that shooter in. Once you've done that, as you see, all those shooters that were selected are in proper squads that we have selected. 
So all in all, practice score is not scary. It's not hard to use, and it's pretty damn efficient. Once you've mastered practice score, it's real simple to hand it off to another fellow RO or SO that knows the game. Uh, kind of give them an idea of what's going on. Let them score the next shooter while you're over their shoulder. Within two shooters, boom, they've got it. Hey, they love it. It's not a bad deal. If you have an iPad, an Android tablet, an iPhone, or an Android phone of any type, you should download Practice Score and get familiar with it. You can set up your own matches, you can play with it, uh, add shooters, and score them, and run matches, and you know, just kind of get a feel for the program. You'll be a lot more comfortable when you come to a match, somebody hands you that little freaking device you can concentrate on your match with confidence you know what you're doing so that is pretty much it for scoring on the practice score system on a device it's not very difficult it does make things a little bit easier the nice thing is results are available instantaneously at the end of the match hope you enjoyed this video and have a great day